During the past few months, we have seen a lot of happenings that went against what we know as Canadians, from politicians forcing ideologies on people, to homelessness, crime, and inflation. But it seems now the government sets its crosshair on a shocking new target, one that is near and dear to everyone who believes in democracy and one I didn't expect myself to be debating in Canada, the right to free speech. Renowned clinical psychologist Dr. Jordan Peterson has faced tremendous controversy throughout his career for his willingness to tackle society's most divisive issues. However, none have posed as a serious threat to Peterson's livelihood and principles as the ruling handed down earlier this year by the Ontario College of Psychologists, one that most can say is not only an attack on Peterson himself, but an attack on freedom of speech as whole, whose aftermath may be one as Canadians will have to adjust to if we dare to voice a different opinion to the government in power later down the line. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. In the ruling, the college sanctioned Peterson for opinions he expressed on social media and during a famous three-hour-long podcast interview with Joe Rogan. After the ruling, Jordan Peterson took to social media where he made a post explaining the situation and voicing his disdain on the matter. Jordan then promised a reply to the full story the very next day. Jordan indeed then took to social media the following day seeking to shed some clarity on the situation. Peterson's daughter Michaela sat down with him for a candid no bars allowed discussion, which they shared on their YouTube channels. During the conversation, Peterson meticulously broke down the absurd specifics of the college's complaints against him. It centered around tweets criticizing Canadian politicians, primarily the Liberals, on the head of which is Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Peterson has openly criticized Trudeau on social media and in interviews for some time now. His criticisms stem from disagreements over policies dealing with issues like gender identity, climate change, and freedom of speech. Peterson believes Trudeau pushes ideological stances without considering opposing viewpoints. On Twitter, Peterson called Trudeau the worst prime minister in Canada's history. He argues Trudeau's policies have harmed the country's economy and international standing. Peterson also opposes legislation endorsed by Trudeau, such as bills related to preferred pronouns. These types of pointed critiques of a powerful politician clearly ruffle feathers. But Peterson maintains his stance that publicly questioning and disagreeing with leaders is important in a free society. He thinks citizens of a country need this kind of scrutiny and dissent to hold governments accountable. He also stated his long-voiced deep concerns about the direction of Canadian politics and culture. He believes Canada has become increasingly committed to ideological possession in recent decades. In Peterson's view, modern progressive movements have gained too much influence over governmental and social institutions. Policies focused on identity politics and radical environmentalism have been enacted without considering opposing viewpoints. The federal government's response to widespread protests only reinforced Peterson's doubts. When trucker convoys occupied Ottawa to protest mandates, he felt invoking emergency orders was an overreach aimed at quelling dissent. More broadly, Peterson is alarmed by rising cultural polarization and the vilification of alternative perspectives in public life. He thinks an overly politicized climate stifles honest debates so vital for addressing complex issues. Financially, Peterson argues average Canadian incomes have stagnated compared to America under decades of mismanagement. The ballooning national debt troubles him as well due to the burden on future generations. On international affairs, Peterson believes Canada needs to take a stronger stance against authoritarianism too. The country's reliance on relations with China especially concerns him. So through his criticism of both social and economic policy shortcomings, Peterson portrays a government detached from principles of openness and accountable more to special interests, pushing ideology over pragmatism and civil liberties. So, back to the case against him. One of the most disturbing claims of all was that none of the complaints originated from Peterson's actual clients. They came from anonymous accusers worldwide who admitted to never interacting with Peterson professionally. Yet strangely, the college pursued these strange and possibly malicious accusations instead of dismissing them as without merit from the outset. While being careful to acknowledge the responsibilities of professionals to standards of conduct, Peterson was adamant that the college had overstepped in this instance by sanctioning opinions expressed separate from his clinical work. The ordered re-education program posed a clear infringement on his civil liberties. As Peterson noted, being compelled to alter one's views indefinitely under threat is obviously a punitive measure, not the non-disciplinary coaching the college disingenuously claimed. The notion that ideological conformity could be forcibly imposed through opaque means was utterly antithetical to principles of open debate. Peterson's criticisms of powerful political figures like Trudeau surely contributed to antagonism from the left with political powers seeking to shield the liberals from accountability. However, Peterson pointed out the hypocrisy of critics who portray themselves as champions of underprivileged groups while sanctioning viewpoints inconsistent with their ideology. 
He took particular issue with those on the far left supporting policies like radical environmentalism, which disproportionately harm the world's most vulnerable segments through energy rationing and anti-growth dogma. As with compelled speech, imposing one's ideology on others through coercive means should give any one of us pause. Most alarming was the court of holding the college's actions based on a convoluted technicality that professionals' rights to expression are subordinate to regulators' arbitrary new rules. This set the disturbing precedent that certain opinions expressed lawfully could be officially prohibited depending on one's occupation. The implications extended far beyond even Peterson's case. As a clinician himself, Peterson knows firsthand the culture of fear that breeds among professionals reluctant to dissent for risk of censorious backlash. A system that compels conformity invariably leads to decline. In discussing his decision to keep fighting, Peterson acknowledged the immense personal toll but framed his stance as a moral duty rather than a simple matter of self-interest. Despite understandable resentment, Peterson was resolute the ruling could not be allowed to normalize censorship or go unchallenged. He also conveyed why struggles to defend bedrock democratic principles like freedom of expression prove most imperative when controversial opinions are at stake. If we allow such infringements to pass without review, it will inevitably empower overreachers to keep broadening censorship's scope. To those inclined towards resignation that Canada has become irrevocably woke, Jordan Peterson has emerged as a heroic figure willing to sacrifice dearly in defense of open discourse. Through his defiance of repression even in isolation, Peterson galvanizes others to likewise take a stand in whatever capacity against the creeping tyranny of virtue. If allowed to advance unchecked, it's a matter of time that will extend to not only a few but freedom for all. Peterson has faced immense pressure in the form of protests, no platforming and harassment simply for giving a platform to alternative perspectives. However, through it all Peterson has refused to be silenced, continuing to write, speak and empower common citizens to think for themselves on issues of consequence. On a personal level, Peterson remains resolute in the face of substantial costs, both financial and emotional. In addition to legal fees which could climb into the hundreds of thousands, the stress of a prolonged court battle threatens serious risks to Peterson's health after past struggles with severe depression. Yet for Peterson, standing up for principle proves more important than comfort or popularity when civil liberties are at stake. For the sake of all Canadians hoping not just to observe but participate fully in civic life, Jordan Peterson deserves continued solidarity in challenging censorship in the highest courts. So long as voices remain willing to contest ever-expanding controls on expression, oppressed ideas yet live on and the marketplace of thoughts stays open for reinvigoration. Peterson understands that true progress emerges not through coerced uniformity but open confrontation of divergent ideas. So that's all I have to say on the topic. What do you think about this story? Do you stand with Jordan Peterson? Do you believe that this is an attack on freedom of speech as a whole? Let me know in the comments below. Also, kindly subscribe and leave a like for this video and our other videos because they go a long way in helping our latest content rank. Follow us on our new Twitter account, where we post stuff we can't post on YouTube. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and we'll see you in the next one.